Uh, namaskar to all of you. Uh, I am welcoming you all to our uh, YouTube channel for a discussion on business risk taking. Today we have with us a change maker, Anthony, uh, who is a social responsibility and educational enthusiast and goodwill consultant. Uh, welcome, Mr. Anthony. Hello, hello, sir. Yeah, and uh, we also have an enterprising entrepreneur, uh, B. B. Venkat Shah, a real business uh, risk taker. Welcome to you, sir. Hi. Uh, we also have Chengala Raya, uh, the retired uh, Chief Manager of uh, State Bank of Mysore, sir. Charming Chief Manager Chengala Raya. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, charming both. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Venkat Swami and Jai Pagas, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I am very happy to be with you, uh, the three members in our panel. But mainly, our Anthony will be our uh, main guest and uh, answers will be supported by Venkat Shyam. At the end, I request Mr. Changal Raya to um, uh, share his uh, opinion about our uh, uh, program. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Anthony, uh, what all the research to be undertaken before uh, kickstart of any business? Yeah, so, uh, sir, uh, research as in it is a pretty much uh, valuable uh, model which helps out any business uh, before a business could be started or even uh, any sort of research on the business uh, to be done. So what, this particular research is uh, pretty much required in every parts of uh, operations, every parts of business operations. So research is required wherein in terms of to understand, for example, let me put in a few thought processes in terms of to understand what is it your demand and supply so to do a demand and supply analysis for your business, whether your product is demanded, does it as a demand in the market? Okay. Or your product doesn't have any demand or it has less demand. So these sort of aspects comes into picture when it comes to the demand and supply analysis and let it be any, any other sort of analysis as well. For example, which particular uh, state or which particular country or which particular uh, region your product is going to be sold or your product can be sold better. So these sort of researches as well are much required. So, so that's the reason I, I said that research is a very, very imperative and important part of any business when you could start mm -hmm. or even as our uh, context, even our main context which says business risk takers. So when you are getting into a risk or when you sense a risk, again, if you would have done a proper research model uh, previously, that is going to help you out and that is going to give you a boom for you to go ahead after the risk. So these are all few of the... Yeah, yeah great. Uh, I just want to ask Mr. Venkat Shah yeah, about this. Opinion. Primarily, it is the, as uh, Anthony said, it's understanding of the opportunity, size of the opportunity. Mm. And uh, automatically, when we look at uh, you know the size of the opportunity and the opportunity in itself, it will uh, enhance our personal ability to take risk. Right? Okay. So there is there are certain things you know if, if we if we, if it comes to my understanding of risk in a business, there are two uh, parts to it. One is the operational risk. One is the starting risk. Starting risk is at a personal level. The second one is at the operational level where the, there are lots of risks that we're taking. It could be a simple marketing uh, risk that we're taking. It could be a financial risk that we're taking and things like that. So, uh, you know, the research part of it helps in mitigating uh, the risk that we're taking and then makes sure that uh, we are not, uh, we are aware of what we are getting into and working towards betterment of it. That, that's where the change comes in. Yeah, uh, that's nice of you for sharing that information. And uh, Mr. Anthony, uh, what are the strategies for uh, risk management? Yeah, so uh, when it comes to the strategies, uh, yeah, again, uh, different forms of strategies we can uh, put in, in terms of handling the risk. For example, let's uh, call in a strategy called as uh, SWOT analysis. What is your strength? what is your weakness and what are all your opportunities and what are all your threats. So when you do this analysis, you find out where you stand, where you stand in terms of your manufacturing or in terms of your services or in terms of uh, your uh, food supply, anything, any, any business for that matter. 
So uh, one strategy is called a SWOT analysis. And there are different other strategies as well, which will prove us by proper reporting strategies, wherein you take out the report and you do a due analysis on what has happened in the past and what is, what is that you're predicting on your future business model. So these sort of reports as well will help you a lot. So you, uh, you, uh, so we, we all need to build these strategies very importantly. So what is going to be my strategy for my business and what is going to be my strategy to handle the risks and to handle any sort of issues in the coming days. So that's going to help us out because a business without a strategy is not going to help out and not going to travel far. So, so that's yes. the... Yeah, okay. you are correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Venkatsham, I know agree. that you are a very strategic man. What do you say? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, as Anthony said, I just like to add you know, one simple thing. Doing nothing is also a strategy. <laughs> correct. Yeah. Keeping quiet. Yeah. yeah, it may be right or it might be wrong. Ah. Doing uh, nothing is also a part of a strategy. Right? So, yes. Uh, so that's one of this thing and uh, strategically if we have to uh, add I think uh, Anthony will come into those uh, this thing there are so many ways in which you actually strategize yourself to uh, ensure that your risks are reduced uh, and you are sure about uh, the uncertainties that are, you are going to face and ensure that the venture that you are taking forward and moving forward is going to be a success. Uh, every yes. every activity can become a strategy. <laughs> As you're saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. If it is planned well, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Anthony, uh, while talking about uh, risk management, is uh, stakeholders to be involved or not? Yeah. So, uh, sir, when it comes to the stakeholders, so there are different kind of stakeholders when it comes to a company, right? So, uh, uh, normally, normally the shareholders are called in as the stakeholders, right? And in any business term. But uh, let's say in, in literal terms, we call even the employee of the company as a stakeholder because the employees are also important for the company, right? And uh, to run the company well, everyone, the vendors and the employees, and the even the security guard, everyone is going to be one of the stakeholders because they carry a weightage part in that particular operation of that business. So everyone carries a weightage uh, in, in that way. So I would rather say each and every one who ensures that the business is run end of the day is a stakeholder. And when it comes to uh, uh, a discussion about your risk management or when it is a, an important discussion, it is better we involve every representative of different stakes or every representative of different departments in your business. Okay. So, for example, there is a risk which has happened in your business. For example, let's say you are, you are not selling well comparatively to last year and you are very, very poor, you are becoming very poor compared to last year and you identify, you do reporting and you find out what is the issue, why it is happening and why there is a lag in your business, right? So when you involve every stakeholder and discuss with them, there are chances that uh, uh, everyone will come out with their valid points and it is going to matter end of the day and it's also going to make a huge difference in that way. So that, that is how uh, we should be involving the stakeholders. And uh, it, is, it is my recommendation that everyone needs to be involved and that can be a bit better change in your business. And apart from that, uh, individuals can also have different viewpoints in terms of, uh, you know, uh, no, only the management has to be involved uh, or only the top management has to be involved in that ways. But yeah, a certain uh, topics, certain discussions can, be on, can only have the management, as simple as that. But when it comes to a very important decision making or very important risk handling, I think every stakeholder can make a difference. So that's what uh, for my yeah yeah. yeah. So the stakeholder yes. is looked at as a partner in the progress that we are trying to make yeah. in the business, as Anthony rightly pointed. But we also need to remember if we are in uh, something like R and D kind of a thing, yeah, right, and we are creating something of an intellectual property. I think he missed out saying so I'm just adding there. So uh, intellectual property or a patent uh, that is to be filed are very cre crucial yeah. information and things like yeah. that. I, 
uh, we need to figure out which stakeholders know about it and who don't know about it. Don't know about it, yeah. We are risking uh, leakage of information there. So that, that's the, a risk that we will be riding on. So that is one uh, crucial thing that I think we should look at. Otherwise, uh, what is said is right, because involving stakeholders in decision making you know, enhances the strategy that we are uh, taking or the steps that we are action points that we are taking to ensure that the business runs more smoothly and uh, better. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And uh, since they are all in agreement, uh, they know in which direction are we headed and what is to be done. But that's hmm. a very, very important uh, point. Yes, I agree with that. Yes, uh, that's Thank fine, you. sir. Uh, Mr. Anthony, uh, what are the common mistakes uh, made by businessmen? So, uh, I believe we have discussed few points uh, in our previous uh, our discussion. Uh, and a uh, few points would be, uh, you know, if uh, we are, if uh, an individual is missing out on the reports, or okay. if an individual is missing out on uh, the uh, uh, strategies, or if the individual is missing out on involving the stakeholders and having a discussion. So uh, these are all going to be few of the uh, misses and, and, and it, it, this cannot be identified so easily as well because when we run a business and when we uh, start a business, we look at how we move on to the next level. And that is categorized only in terms of where you move up on your revenue. So uh, these points might be uh, getting missed out, but if uh, if these uh, important deliverables are being added up, I okay. think, uh, yeah, 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 we can make it up. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Venkat Sham. Uh, uh, JP, adding to what uh, Anthony said, the cup, one major thing that I've seen is people don't spend enough money to uh, run their business. Okay. And uh, there is a cost of uh, doing business so they would want to cut that cost of doing business, which hampers that, uh, obviously. And the second right. major mistake that they do is uh, hiring wrong people, uh, primarily because of cost factors, right? They want to save costs, so they hire wrong people. And then when you hire wrong people, they do wrong things. So that's the second the major one that I've seen. The third one is uh, they go wrong when it comes to understanding competition, mm -hmm. right? It could be... Uh, you know, uh, they might underestimate the competition or overestimate the competition. So, which again is another uh, major uh, reason. These are the three factors that uh, I can recall and then say that uh, are the reasons why uh, are uh, are the mistakes that uh, normally uh, any businessman or entrepreneur uh, tends to make in his business. Okay, okay, yes, uh, Anthony. Uh, what about marketing plan and risk management? Yeah, so uh, what I would uh, present in terms of marketing plan, it is uh, it is one of the pretty much vital and uh, pretty much uh, most required aspect of any business. Uh, as uh, Venkat sir was saying, the, uh, the teams miss out on uh, spending, right? So uh, marketing is one of the important spend for any business. And... Uh, and when we miss that, and when that is being missed, that, that is one essential tool, which is very much required. And uh, for example, uh, we have also formed uh, especially a team in the recent times called as uh, uh, branding with uh, Think Tank, Think Entrepreneur. So we have formed a team wherein we reach out to the brands and we also help them out in terms of the marketing ideas and preparing the marketing plans and uh, making ready with their uh, digital uh, marketing aspect because the most of the companies don't even have a clue of what marketing is about and what a 360 degree marketing plan is about because this is mainly this this has this has uh, this has come up mainly because as we discussed uh, the teams focus the companies uh, focus mainly on their sales mainly on their revenue but on the other hand they miss to spend the time on what they need to spend and what they need to uh, market about because that is going to help their company to a greater extent and rather than 
looking at the sales merely because uh, it might look good that without a marketing plan, without a proper marketing plan, that in the short term, your business might look better and might look bigger. But down the line, when you travel and when you move on, when you look at a long-term strategy, when you look at a long-term plan, for sure, marketing is a must, which is required to move up your business and also to establish your business among the other competitors. Yeah, of course, marketing uh, is the main thing. Yes, Mr. Venkatsham? Primarily branding, as uh, Anthony yeah. said. Branding mm -hmm. is uh, one area which uh, most entrepreneurs uh, miss out primarily. Uh, basically, because uh, they don't focus on branding uh, as uh, they won't have clearly defined the core values that uh, either the product or service is going to uh, take it across to the customer or the product or the service which they are taking it across to the customer. That is one, this thing. And the second mistake, uh, uh, which are Second thing that has to be looked into and mitigated as a risk is, uh, you know, uh, you start, when you start or have a product or a service, you start talking to everyone in whom you come across, but might not be the right audience to talk at all. So that's a second uh, mistake which happens. And uh, the biggest one and the third biggest one which I can see or think about is assumption of what the customer wants. They assume, you know, I always say this, uh, assume is a funny word. You know, first three letters is as, ASS, as, and then you have you, and then you have me. So if you assume, you are making an ass of you and me, right? So don't, don't assume. So for, forget assumptions, get into reality is what Anthony pointed to, and I will also point. Yes, uh, that's fine. And what about the new entrepreneurs uh, who are entering uh, in the uh, uh, with a lot of tensions and all and uh, their risk management? Yeah, so new entrepreneurs, uh, sir, mainly uh, uh, for the new entrepreneurs, it is very, very important. They need to learn about the basic uh, uh, points or the basic actionables. Uh, for example, let's say about business plan. Preparing a business plan um, doesn't give uh, a proper idea to most of the new entrepreneurs and most of, uh, let's, let's say, for example, even the student entrepreneurs. So preparing the business plan becomes a very big task for them. Okay, But on the other hand, they need to understand about the business plan and they need to prepare it very, very well in, in accordance that they are more passionate about the business and what they want to do. And next would be in terms of uh, their research as well. So uh, the new entrepreneurs miss to do the research because they don't have uh, that much of time and they don't have that much of uh, resources to do a research. Okay, not, not blaming them, but they don't have that much of resources to do the uh, research aspect. Yeah, and they need to do the research for sure because the moment they are going to only form the business and not going to do a research, they're going to lack in something. So things like this normally get missed and even the demand supply analysis as we discussed. So most of the, these things are much required, the most required, and uh, they tend to miss. And especially let's come into our main topic called risk management. So they need to do a very proper analysis on what all risk they can foresee and what all kind of risk they can come in um, uh, in, in, in a meet up with one fine day. For example, they start the business today and one year from now, there might be a bigger risk. So they need to keep their heads ready for it. And they need to be heads up for any sort of situation which comes up, any sort of futuristic situation. So these risk management give a lot of lessons, a lot of learnings to the uh, new entrepreneurs, especially because only once they face, they start to scratch their head. And, uh, and before they could think about this particular risk, they can stop meeting this risk itself. So, uh, uh, so that's going to be one of the other great learning. Yeah. Yes, Venkat Shyam, about brand new entrepreneurs and risk. Uh, as uh, we discussed in the first question, Anthony has said that uh, you have to do research, right? You need to understand where you are getting into. If you don't know where you're going, Wherever you go is fine, correct? 
but if you have a destination to go then you would mark the right route and then go it is as simple and as clear as that so uh, it's all about if you are taking risk you know uh, there is a financial risk there is an emotional risk these are two things which are involved right so uh, uh, many a times uh, people underestimate the financial risk and they completely forget the they completely forget the emotional risk that they are taking what if the product fails what if the venture fails right it's an emotional risk you have a, you are carrying a baggage of uh, risk there so uh, these all these can be looked into very well only when we do some homework on it the moment we do some homework on it there would always be risk mitigation plans you know uh, like uh, as you were saying saying plan a plan b plan c plan b i mean the 26 alphabet plan i would say it would be 676 uh, options <laughs> a a a b a c a d and all those things you can create uh, okay right? so you can create lot many options to it and then you can go on so that's yeah. where the story is so uh, as uh, anthony says you should have done your homework in the first instance <laughs> right build your brand done your market research and then you you step in automatically you can mitigate all your risk Uh, yeah the next question is on market research only mm. and what about market research and risk management yes mr anthony yeah so mark yeah so market research is uh, i think we have spoken a lot uh, sir we have spoken about market research a lot right in a complete uh, discussion because that's one of the very important and very vital aspect of any business mm-hmm. and uh, they need to do uh, there has to be a proper market study for any sort of uh, business which uh, comes up so the uh, the market study uh, happens in in terms of uh, uh, where your product can sell and where is your target audience so when you hear this particular term it's a, it's a very it's a very vital term in any sort of business setup where is your target audience and what is your usp so these things talk about your overall market research plan so let's let's get into the target audience so for example you're making you're making a a, a suit for example uh, which is which is of a different quality and which is uh, ultimately which gives you a maximum comfortable uh, sense when you when you wore it and and you you are you are very much unique in in that particular fabric so mm-hmm. how you how, how you find out your target audience so where you reached your target audience and how you reached your target audience so that's going to be one of the very important uh, aspect and let's come to usp so usp is uh, called as a uh, unique selling point so what is your unique selling point for your product so uh, if uh, so let's say the same suit the suit example which i gave you so the suit which you manufacture what is the usp in it why people should buy it why cannot people buy a different suit why should they come for yours so what is there in your product what what thread you use what material you use and who manufactures it so those are all the usps which you can uh, give and and these are all few of the points which covers under your market research okay. so market research is a very vital uh, step sir yeah uh, yeah uh, any additional research is very very huge matter uh, you are saying okay very huge subject in fact uh, you need to define what do you want to uh, understand when you are doing market research yeah why do you want to do market research is what uh, anthony was articulating it so unless you know why you want to do a market research it would be unclear is it the demographic research that you are trying to do or the psychographic uh, research as uh, we discussed it out you know or uh, is it understanding of the competition that we are trying to do in the market research so these are things that uh, we have to define there are so many things which research may not point out also uh, you know a classic example is if uh, amazon and ebay when they started uh, 27 28 years back had done market research or even apple when they were building the first personal computer in the world 
if they had done market research, it would have come out very, very evidently that the market did not need it. But once the need was made to understand uh, through the you know market communication, saying that you know when the market research comes back and says that market does not require this product, we need to re- give out a reason as to why that particular product is required by the market and how is it going to make their their lives simpler, easier for the user or uh, the, the the if it is a service, then how does the service uh, taker get benefited out of it? You know, uh, that articulation as a branding point also comes out very, very well when we do market research. So uh, it's an essential part of this thing. And uh, it's an essential evil. If you don't do market research uh, and learn quickly before you do things, market will teach you lessons which are going to be expensive. (laughs) Correct, sir. Uh, Before going for the last question, I just want to share the information that I have written. I have written a book on Solo Galige Engidri in Canada and Fear Not Failures in English. Okay. And uh, I also welcome all of you to uh, listen to my show, Solo Galige Engidri with JP Nagati Halli at Radio City 91.1 FM at uh, 10 a.m. every day. Uh, this is starting from today, that means 8th of June. 2021. Why I have shared this information? Because my next question is on uh, mistakes and failures. Learning through mistakes, learning through failures. Uh, what makes the difference, Mr. Anton? So this is a very wonderful topic and one of my favorite topic as well, sir, because uh, learning from your failures is uh, one uh, great uh, opportunity which everyone gets. Because uh, not everyone succeeds, but everyone meets with failure. So uh, end, end, end of the day, so, so uh, what happens is when you come out, when you meet up with a failure, what happens is immediately you get the feeling of uh, either emotional trauma or you get into the feeling of uh, panicking, right? So that's what normally happens. But uh, when you look, at, look back at your failure and you uh, uh, look at your future, okay? You can easily find out that there has been a connect which has you have learned from your failure and you have given back something in the future. So uh, failure also helps you learn. It doesn't only hurts you or breaks you or, uh, or uh, puts you back at the back foot, but it also helps you learn. And failure gives you a lot of uh, success uh, steps which you can... Uh, evidence yourself and which you can easily climb on so if you ask me the question how especially when you come across a failure you learn why i shouldn't fail how i can be without failing right so that you evidence only after you fail only once you fail you find out the lesson how you can uh, present yourself and how you can get away from that failure right so yeah. so the 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 very incident called failure gives you that learning so yeah. when you try to uh, uh, treat failure as a precious uh, uh, product it obviously happens so that you can create your success steps end of the day uh, yeah yeah we should yeah. treat yeah. it as an experience rather than just yeah. a failure and uh, what's the view of uh, venkat shah okay uh, maybe if i have to add you know uh, at times, we get into renovation of our homes. I'll just go back. <laughs> that, right? So we will destruct some part Correct. and redo it. Yeah. So uh, why are we doing it in the first instance? Because primarily because there was a failure in our planning or the change that you know the situation and time brought in that particular point. You know uh, this thing uh, space in the house was not useful. So we decided to reuse it. So at that point of time, we go into a destruction and then do it. That's point number one that I wanted to, or analogy number one, which I wanted to. The second analogy, which I wanted to do is, there is nothing wrong in going back, right? If we look at long jumpers and high jumpers, they stay, go away from the start line. They go backwards from the start line, right? And then they come and then take a leap. They jump. 
right? Correct. It could be a long jump or a high jump, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. They, they, there is nothing wrong in going back also. But it, what we will have to look at is what is the cost of failure? Yes. Right? Or the cost of mistake or cost of failure is there something which has to be looked into. Yes. Some expensive failures teach very, very responsible lessons for a lifetime for all of us. Yes. Right? So uh, looking at that, as Anthony mm -hmm. said, learning from the failures, moving from one failure to another, not doing the same mistake again, is a hallmark of a successful uh, leader. Yeah, to sum it up, all success stories have chapters of failures. Correct. And so definitely, I want to thank all of you. At the end, I thank want, uh, I request Mr. Changal Raya for his closing remarks. Yes, Changal Raya. Thank you very much, sir, for the privilege. First of all, uh, I thank our eminent speakers of the day, Mr. Antoine Filmin and uh, our uh, another expert, uh, D.V. Venkat Swamson. Today, okay. I do not know about this business and all the about risks, sir. but I came to know from their talk, I learned so many things today, sir. He, they have told about uh, the types of risks involved in the business, namely personal risk, operational risk, financial risk, emotional risk, all those things. They have given the strategies how to they reduce the risk and also how the stockholders are very, very important in business organization and how we have to make our fat analysis before starting the business. And uh, we have to come back after uh, uh, taking the failures into account because failures teach us a, a lot of lessons to us. From them, we can learn so many things. Sir. And all these things were told by our experts. I'm very, very happy, sir. This program is a very, very wonderful and fantastic. And the newcomers can also get this idea to start their business very newly. And they will be very, uh, very informative, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you, one and all, sir. Thank you. Uh, I thank uh, all the guests here. Thank you very much. So please do subscribe to our channel and uh, like our channel and share this video to as many as people possible. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Sir. Thank, Thank you. you. My pleasure.